Hey, this is John from PowerYourself.com. Wanted to give you guys an update on uh, the welding progress here. I'm still waiting on the TIG welder to come back from the repair shop. They promised me it would be done today. Um, I plan on calling them at the end of the day. But in the meantime, went ahead and uh, did some more practicing with my uh, oxyacetylene torch. Um, I have a, uh, I think I showed this before, but a, a Miko Midget uh, oxyacetylene torch. And uh, I was having some problems last time, as you guys saw in the videos, the welds were absolutely uh, brittle and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I, I did everything that I usually did before and it just wasn't working. But what actually happened was, um, looks like I had some leaks in my hoses and either oxygen was getting in or the pressure at least was varying coming out of the tip of the torch so that definitely will uh, contaminate the weld if it if it if, you know flutters or changes um, you know consistency the oxygen and the acetylene has to be in the proper ratio in order not to uh, contaminate your weld so here these are not the best welds ever but they are a little bit better let me zoom in here on my see the one to the right is the first weld that I did of the day and this and the one to the left um, is the second weld so you can see that it's it's not the the prettiest weld this one I was still kind of tuning in the settings and then this one is a little bit better so you can see at some points I was actually able to get a bead going and and run with it so um, it was not too hard actually I was going much faster than I remember before so I think I I you know watched and looked at some more information about some more tips on oxygen acetylene welding and I found uh, there was a few things that I could do to help improve I'm not by any means a expert I'm just just trying to learn this almost uh, art form here more so than anything else but um, I did use a, a hammer so I used this hammer here to kind of planish and flatten the welds out a little bit. Um, but the, the welds do tend to be quite flexible, as you see. You can see this one here is a weak weld. It's really not a full penetration weld. I didn't get full penetration the whole way. And I didn't actually even finish the weld on the end. But you can see that the weld is fairly flexible. The, Radius of curvature stays fairly straight, so if I grind, grind you know, ground that down with a grinding wheel, um, I did brush it up with a wire wheel, but I didn't grind it at all. Um, I could grind that down, and it would pretty much disappear if you if you worked at it. Anyway, I'm going to keep practicing, and uh, hopefully, when the tig tig welder comes back, um, we'll go ahead and uh, get going on the gas fire project. I will do a sample for you. This is just mild steel. I will do a sample for you uh, with some stainless steel to, to show you that it is possible to oxi oxygen acetylene weld stainless and we'll see uh, what's better, the TIG or the uh, oxygen acetylene torch. I promised you that a long time ago and I still uh, plan on doing that. So look forward to that, to that comparison, that review. Thanks for, uh, for watching and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, This is John from PowerYourself.com signing off.